In this video, we will go over creating various types of views, unique settings for each view, and creating and applying view templates for those views. Real quick before we get started, please be sure to hit subscribe to this channel. It will help others find these videos. So out of the box Revit template comes with views already set up. So chances are you already have some floor plan views, some ceiling views, some maybe some elevations already set up in your project, but chances are you're gonna to need to set up more views to pro properly document your design. So one thing to remember, if you go to an elevation or a section, I'm gonna draw a quick section from the quick access toolbar, and I'm gonna double click on the blue side so one thing to remember is if you have levels already set up and notice the different color of level head, we have one black and two that are blue here. So generally things that are blue are editable. So in this case, when the level head is blue, you can double click on it and it'll go to the corresponding floor plan. So if we go back to that section view, notice we have a floor plan set up for this minus five street level view and the zero zero main level view, but the 10 foot bearing height view is black. So we don't have a view set up for that. We're probably gonna wanna set one up for that view so we can display a roof plan. So in order to create new views, you wanna go to the view tab which I'm already on, and then the create panel. So the create panel has all the types of views that you will want from 3D view all the way over to the 2D views of drafting views, legends, and schedules. So this is where you create everything that you need to document your design. So let's talk about plan views. I'm gonna click on the drop down. We have different types of plan views here. Floor plan, reflected ceiling plan, structural plan. This one's grayed out, plan region, which we will talk about in a minute, and then area plan. All of these plans have different settings built into them. An area plan is created specifically for an area plan to calculate your square footage. Plan region, we'll talk about in a minute. Structural plan, this has very specific settings that unless you're a structural engineer, you probably won't find this plan useful. Reflected ceiling plan, that's just cutting through and looking up. And a floor plan, that's what we're gonna create right now. So I'm gonna click on floor plan. This brings you to the new floor plan dialog box. And first thing under type, if you had multiple types of floor plans set up, you could click on this drop down and select what type of floor plan. Or if you want to add a floor plan, you can click edit type, duplicate. I'm gonna leave that floor plan two for now. And now you can see that I have floor plan one and floor plan two. I'm gonna stick with the regular floor plan. Notice that the only option here is the 10 foot bearing height. That is because I have this check, do not duplicate existing views. Since we already have a view set up for the other two levels, those aren't gonna show up. If I uncheck that, then they show up and I can create a duplicate view of those two other views. But we wanna create this one and say okay. And you know, we'll need to change the view range and change some of our visibility graphics in order to make this look like an actual roof plan. Now let's talk about the other item that was on the drop down the plan region, which was grayed out when we were in elevation, but now it's available. So what a plan region is used for is you can see the video going right there. If you have a high window that isn't part of your v original view range of your overall plan, you can put a plan region around that window and apply a different view range to it. So let's jump back to the view range of this plan. So in the floor plan properties, if you scroll down, you'll find view range. I'm gonna edit that. 
So you see my cut plane is at four feet right now. And then our primary range goes up to seven foot six and down to zero, zero. So that's, that's my view range right now. It's cutting it four feet and it's, I can see everything down to zero, zero and everything up to seven foot six. So if I go over to this bathroom, I know I have a window. I can hover over it and it highlights. It's because the sill height is at seven feet. So it's, it's showing up here, but you can't see that there's a window there. And I want to show that there's a window there. So this is where we'd use a plan region. So window's not showing up because the four foot original cut plane isn't cutting through the window. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the plan view dropdown, click on plan region. Then I'm gonna go, you'll see that we are in a kind of an edit mode, just like floors and ceilings. I'm gonna click on the rectangle. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle in that general vicinity that it doesn't have to be perfectly around the window. And then finish edit mode. This plan region adopted the view settings for the plan that it's on. So I need to change that. I'm going to make the cut plane seven foot six because I know the window sill is at seven. And then I'm gonna make the top eight foot six and click okay. And now you can see it looks like the other windows. So someone knows there is a high window there. So plan regions are view specific, meaning if you have multiple plan views, that have a high window, the same high window, you will need to draw a plan region on each one of those views, or you can copy paste from one view to the next. Now let's talk about elevations and sections. This is really the power of BIM and Revit. Being able to have these views so quickly is so great. All right, so I have some elevations and a section already set up. So let's talk about the settings for each. So this is an elevation data. It's pointing to the side of the house. There are two parts to this datum. There is the datum itself and there's the actual view. So if you need to move these around, you can move just the datum or you can move the view as well. If I click on the arrow portion of this datum, this line indicates the cut plane of the elevation. So the elevation starts at this line and is looking toward the size, side of the house. If we look over in the property settings of the elevation, we have a far clipping. This is clip with line. I like this setting. If I click on that, there's some other settings. Real quick, if we say no clip, you'll see that that line went away and there's really no, you cannot control the depth of the view. So I'm gonna say clip with line. And now I have this arrow. So this arrow controls the depth of the view. This line controls where the view starts. So I actually want to move this line as close to the house as possible because there are line weight settings that we can add to the elevation and it's called depth queuing and it applies a gradient to the view so you can see some depth perception. So now that I've moved that elevation close to my house, I can move that back, and that is a contained elevation view. So same type of settings with the section, since I already have a section drawn here. So again, section is on your quick access toolbar. I've actually formatted a keyboard shortcut SEC to draw a section. Or again, you go to view and press section. Same thing as elevation, the section line is where it's cutting through the house and this arrow controls the depth. So if you don't wanna see entirely through the house, you just wanna see that one section, you bring the depth really close and you can click on the blue and then it's just showing basically where you're cutting through close out of that. A couple other settings to this section, you can flip it with the controls here, flip the direction. You can also use this cycle to change the datum, what the datum looks like. And you have an elbow in the middle. If you didn't want to have your line go through the building, 
you can move it out and still have your section. One other thing you can do is you can split the segment so it moves it around a little bit. Those are kind of the general settings of elevations and sections. The last thing I want to talk about on this video, I know it's getting a little bit long, but there's a lot of settings to these views, is a view template. So view templates are really good to have set up in your project template because it can really save you a lot of time and it can pr promote drawing standards and document consistency. So you want to get one view set up how you want it and then you can create the view template from that view. It's generally the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to do it for the section view and then I'm going to double click on the section. I might make some changes here. Let's, maybe we want to turn the planting off so we can see the entire house. And so I'm going to go to visibility graphics and click P. It'll scroll down, turn off planting. Maybe I don't want to see my topography on. So I'm going to click T and it goes down to topography. Okay, so that, that looks pretty good. I can, I can really tell what my, my elevation looks like. I'm going to change the scale. Sometimes you need to put the view on the sheet to figure out your scale, but let's say I know I want this quarter inch. So it's very easy. You can change the scale either up here in your properties or down here. Okay, and then the, this is the crop that's on, which we're going to talk about in part two next video. So now this view looks good. This is how I want it. So I'm going to go up to my view tab over on, under the graphics panel view templates. I'm going to create template from current view. So this is going to take all the settings of this one view. I'm going to name it elevations and okay. Then it kind of goes in. It's like, are you sure you want to include all of these things on this? For example, if you don't want to apply scale, you can uncheck that and then it won't be applied to the views. I'm going to keep it on for this on this case and then press okay. Now I can apply this view template to all of the sections at once and it'll turn off the topography and the planting for all the other sections. So I'm simply going to click on one elevation, hold down shift, click on the other one. So I have all four selected and then I'll go to the properties under view template and I will apply the elevations view template. And now all of those elevations have the view template applied and have the same settings. The other great thing about view templates, if you needed to change the settings, say, okay, I want to turn planting back on, just turn that back on. And then the planning will turn on, on all four of those views. So it really makes it quick and easy. So lastly, we're going to talk about 3d views and in particular camera views. So I'm going to go to my zero, zero main level view for this. And under the view tab, we have a 3D drop down. So we have a walkthrough, camera, and default view. We're going to go over camera views here. So I'm going to click on camera view. I'm just going to go, the first click is where you want to place the camera. And the second click is the direction and the depth that you want the camera. So I'm going to click it there. And then it goes to that 3D view. So you want to go over here and probably rename it. So I'm going to say front perspective. Some other settings, you can change it to orthographic or perspective. You can change the eye level, five foot six, if you wanted it higher, say eight foot, it'll move it up. Five foot six. Okay, so let's say you don't really like this angle. You wanna change the location of the camera view, but if you go to the main level, you can't see that. So what you need to do is click on the view, right click, show camera and now it'll show it temporarily and you can move it around. So now if we go back to that front perspective, you can see it looks a little bit different. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching and sticking it through. I know it was a long one. In the next video, we're going to talk about creating sheets and the various settings for that.